Now, I'm Peter Burris, Chief Research Officer for Wikibon the Cube, and welcome to another special digital community event. Today, we're going to be presenting Wikibon's 2019 trends. Now, I'm here in our Palo Alto studios in kind of a low-tech mode, uh, precisely because all of our crews are out at all the big shows bringing you the best of what's going on in the industry and broadcasting it over the cube. But that's okay, because I've asked each of our Wikibon analysts to use a similar approach to uh, present their insights into what will be the most impactful trends for 2019. Now, the way we're going to do this is first we're going to use this video as a basis for getting our insights out, and then at the end we're going to utilize a crowd chat to give you an opportunity to present your insights back to the community. So, at the end of this video, please stay with us and share your con you know, share your insights, share your thoughts, your experience, ask your questions about what you think will be the most impactful trends in 2019 and beyond. A number of years ago, Wikibon predicted that cloud, while dominating computing, would not feature all data moving to the cloud, but rather the cloud experience and cloud services moving to the data. We call that true private cloud computing, and there has nothing been, uh, has occurred in the last couple of years that has suggested that we were any way wrong about this prediction. In fact, if we take a look at what's going on with Edge, our expectation is that increasingly edge computing and on-premise technologies or needs will further accelerate the rate at which cloud experiences end up on-premise, end up at the edge, and that will be the dominant model for how we think about computing over the course of the next few years. That leads to greater distribution of data, that leads to greater distribution of uh, places where data actually will be used, all under the aegis of cloud computing, but not utilizing the centralized public cloud model that so many predicted. Uh, prediction we'd like to talk about is how multi-cloud and orchestration of those environments fit together. Uh, at Wikibon, we've been looking for many years at how digital businesses are going to leverage cloud and cloud is not a singular entity and therefore the outcomes that you're looking for often require that you use more than one uh, cloud, especially if you're looking at public clouds. Uh, we believe we've been seeing the ascendance of Kubernetes as a fundamental foundational piece of uh, enabling this multi-cloud environment. Um, Kubernetes is not the, the sole thing, and of course you don't want to overemphasize any specific tool, uh, but you're seeing, uh, driven by the CNCF and a broad ecosystem, uh, that Kubernetes is getting into all of the platforms, both public and private cloud, uh, and that we predict that by 2023, 90% of multi-cloud enterprise applications will use Kubernetes uh, to lead for the enablement of uh, their multi-cloud strategy. One of the biggest challenges that the industry is going to face over the next few years is how to deal with multi-cloud. We predict ultimately that a sizable percentage of the marketplace, as much as 90%, uh, uh, will be taking a multi-cloud approach first to how they conceive, build, and operate their high strategic value applications uh, that are engaging customers, engaging partners, and driving their businesses forward. However, that creates a pressing need for three new classes of technology. Technology that provides multi-cloud internetworking, technology that provides orchestration of services across clouds, and finally, technologies that ensure data protection across multi-cloud. While each of these domains by themselves is relatively small today, we think that over the next decade, they will each grow into markets that are tens of billions, if not hundreds of billions of dollars in size. The prediction I'd like to talk about relates to robotic process automation, RPA. So we've observed that there's a widening gap between how many jobs are available worldwide and the number of qualified candidates to fill those jobs. RPA, we believe, is going to become a fundamental approach to closing that gap and really operationalizing artificial intelligence 
executives that we talked to in the cube, they realize they just can't keep throwing bodies at the problem. So these so-called software robots are going to become increasingly easy to use. And we think that low code or no code approaches to automation and automating workflows is going to drive the RPA market from its current position, which is around a billion dollars, to more than 10x or $10 billion plus by 2023. to predict that in 2019, what we're going to see is more containerization of AI and machine learning for deployment to the edge and to the, you know, throughout the multi-cloud. Um, it's a trend that's been going on for some time. In particular, what we're going to be seeing is an uh, increasing focus on, on technologies or projects and code bases such as Kubeflow, which has been established in the coming, in, the, in this, this year just gone by. Uh, to support that that uh, that approach for containerization of AI out to the edges, in 2019 we're going to see the big guys like uh, Google and AWS and Microsoft and others in the whole AI space begin to march around the need for a common DevOps frameworks such as Kubeflow, um, because really that's where many of their customers are going. The data scientists and app developers who are building these applications. You know they want they want to manage these over Kubernetes with that uh, over the you know using the CNCF stack um, of of, uh, of tooling and projects to enable a degree of supportability, maintainability, and scalability around uh, you know containerized intelligent applications. My prediction is around the move from linear programming and, and data models to matrix computing. Uh, this is a, a move that's happening very quickly indeed as new types of workload come on. And these workloads include AI, VR, AR, video, gaming, very much at the edge of things. And ARM is the key provider of these types of uh, computing chips and computing models that are enabling this type of uh, programming to, to happen. So my prediction is that this type of programming is going to start very, very quickly in 2019. It's going to move very rapidly about two years from now uh, in 2021 into the enterprise market space, but that the preparation for this type of computing uh, and the movement of work right to the edge, very, very close to the sensors, very, very close to where the users are themselves, is going to accelerate over the next decade. The prediction I'd like to make in 2019 is that the CNCF, as the steward of the growing cloud native stack, that they will expand the range of projects to include the frontier topics, really the frontier paradigms in microservices and cloud computing. I'm talking about serverless. My prediction is that uh, 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 virtual kubelets will become an incubating project at CNCF to address the need to provide serverless event driven interfaces to containerized orchestrated microservices. I'd also like to predict that uh, VM and, and, and container coexistence will proceed apace in terms of uh, projects such as especially KubeVert, I think will become also a, a CNCF project. And I think it will be adopted fairly widely. And then one last prediction in that, in that vein is that the recent uh, working group that the CNCF has established with um, Eclipse around IoT, the Internet of Things, I think that will come to fruition. There's an Eclipse project called Ditto that uses IoT and AI and digital twins in a very interesting way for industrial and other applications. I think that will become um, under come under the uh, auspices of, uh, of uh, CNCF in the coming year. Security remains vexing to the cloud industry and the IT industry overall. Historically, it's been about restricting access, largely at the perimeter. And once you provided access through the perimeter, users would have access to an entire organization's 
resources, digital resources, whether it be files or applications or identities. We think that has to change, largely as a consequence of businesses now being restructured, reorganized, and reinstitutionalizing work around data. That what's going to have to happen is a notion of zero trust security is going to be put in place that is fundamentally tied to the notion of sharing data. So instead of restricting access at the perimeter, you have to restrict access at the level of data. That's going to have an enormous set of implications overall for how the, the computing industry works. But two key technologies are essential to making zero trust security work. One is software defined infrastructure so that you can make changes to the configuration of your security uh, policies and instances by other software and two very importantly high quality analytics that are bringing the network and security functions more closely together and through the shared data are increasing uh, the use of ai the use of machine learning etc and ensuring higher quality security models across multiple clouds it's always great to hear from the Wikibon analysts about what is happening in the industry and what's likely to happen in the industry. But now let's hear from you. So let's jump into the crowd chat as an opportunity for you to present your ideas, your insights, ask your questions, share your experience. What will be the most important trends and issues in 2019 and beyond as far as you're concerned? Thank you very much for listening. Now let's crowd chat.